Hi everybody, Nathan Ronan, CFA here with another update for all CFA level one and level two candidates taking their exams in November, 2023 or anytime in 2024, February, May, August and November for level one and May, August and November for level two. If you'd like to hear this update and continue to hear it, please uh, press the subscribe button and the confirmation button now so that you can continue to receive these updates as I do them every week or every two weeks. Well, I'm on vacation. I need a little vacation here between the 2023 and the 2024 program and came to my mind some of the questions that come across to me continuously from level one, level two, and even level three candidates. And one of the questions that came to my mind, and I was just thinking about it, is the question that many level one and level two candidates asked me about, hey, Nathan, what should I be on the lookout for this year or for this exam? Are there any major changes in the program? I think this is an outstanding question, and you need to understand something about CFA Institute, how they operate, how they create their exams, and what they do. Okay? The CFA program doesn't truly stay static at any particular level. In fact, many times topics will change or interchange between the levels. For example, you might have uh, a topic on pensions and it'll only be in the level two program. And then all of a sudden elements of pensions will appear in the level one program and the level two program. Then it will stay in level one and will be removed from level two or It'll only stay in level two and be removed from level one. So there's constant changes from year to year and period to period in different topics of the CFA program. So there is a level of fluidity between the levels. Okay? And that sort of drives candidates uh, a little bit crazy uh, because they're hoping to use old materials to take an existing exam, which I always tell people, don't do that. Never come in to the final exam using the sixth edition when the instructor or the professor is using the seventh edition. Because guess what's gonna be on the exam? A lot of the differences. Don't do that for the CFA. But what I wanna talk about specifically and be more exact is the topic of behavioral finance. Now, traditionally, behavioral finance has been a level three topic, and it's always been tested on the level three exam, mostly as an essay, and then most recently as more in the item set areas. However, in 2024, CFA Institute has removed behavioral finance from the program, and it now only exists in certain degrees in the level one and the level two program. So my warning to you as level one candidates taking the exam in 2023, or if you're level two, taking it in November, 2023, or even if you're a level one or level two candidate taking it in 2024, Heed my advice. I can't guarantee you that you're gonna get a slew of questions about behavioral finance, but since it's no longer in the level three program, it's most realistic to expect you to see something on the level one exam among the 180 multiple choice questions, and more likely even at level two among the 88 item set questions. So I would definitely put a stronger emphasis on behavioral finance, know the different kinds of emotional or cognitive biases, know what are the examples of cognitive biases, what are the examples of emotional biases, and how do you resolve each of the different biases? Would you moderate the customer's behavior or would you adapt to the customer's behavior, for example? Know the different kinds of biases, what's an overconfidence bias or what's a confirmation bias or what's the endowment bias or the hindsight bias or the survivorship bias, all these kinds of biases. Uh, in the behavioral finance material, I would put a special emphasis and have good notes on them, not just from a definitional standpoint, but also looking at a particular situation, and you'll see these in mock exams or practice questions, and knowing how to identify the bias that portfolio manager or that client is exhibiting in their analysis or in their de investment decision-making process. I think that's where you're gonna see a little bit more emphasis because CFA who does like the topic. They've always asked it on the level three exam whenever it was in the level three program. But now since again, it's not in the level three program anymore, you can anticipate to see more of it both at level one and level two. So be prepared. As Confucius once said, to be forewarned is to be for, yeah, 
is to be forewarned is to be forearmed. That's what it was. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. I had to think there for a second. But that's the whole point. So you're being warned. So I would study those areas pretty well. Again, an exam may ask it. An exam might not ask it. But there's a higher probability that you will see something both on the level one and the level two exams. Since again, as I said from the earlier, it's no longer in the level three program. So if you have any questions, reach out to me. Again, I cover these materials quite well in my lectures in level one and level two. If you would like to learn more about it, check on my website at chalkandboard.org. That's C-H-A-L-K, chalk and A-N-D, board, B-O-A-R-D. That's chalkandboard.org. Have a great day.